Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna take a look at the Arteza set of 72 Expert colored pencils. These are under 30 bucks on Amazon and I was really curious as to the quality of them. I've been using a lot of Arteza products lately and they're really inexpensive and they're surprisingly good. So I wanted to know if the colored pencils were going to be good as well. Um, I rearranged my pencils so when you get them, they actually come in three trays but they're kind of the, the colors are divvied up kind of like you get a good selection in each tray and I think they do that in case like you have kids and maybe you're setting your pencils out for them to share but I like to put things in kind of rainbow order so that I can kind of find color friends together you know near each other for blending and whatnot but I think that's why they did that um, they come pre sharpened they have really thick leads I have sharpened some of these I've had no issues with breakage whatsoever I think the the packaging is really good for keeping them secure and shipping and so I'm keeping them in their case for now um, so I'll just, I'll let me show you one of these darker colors just so you can see. The leads are really, really thick. Hopefully, I don't know, that might be too dark for you to see. The leads are really thick. Um, they're pretty well centered. They are domed at the end. And I do find that the colors on the barrel match pretty well. Um, the color on the tip. I did swatch these out on a toned and white paper, which I'll show you in a second. And um, we can talk about some of the pluses and the uh, negatives of these pencils. Um, so let's let's do that. Why did I put that in the wrong color? Look at that. Doesn't that just stand out? Somebody's in somebody is going to be like ah that's bothering me there we go we're all in rainbow order again um so the colors are actually also listed on the back um in case you you know want to look them up i guess or and they're listed on the back and they do run in more of a spectrum order so if you wanted to put them in this order when you get them that would be a great way to do it i just eyeballed it but you can do whatever you want so the first thing i did because i happen to have this sketchbook handy was i swatched them out on my toned tan paper my Strathmore Tone Tan, which is pretty smooth. And they, the colors did stand out pretty well. They weren't quite as opaque as I was hoping for. The colors tend to be more on the vibrant range than on the pastel range. And it's gonna be more of your pastel pencils that, pastel shade, pastel colored pencils, I mean, not like chalk pastels pastel colored pencils that tend to be more opaque and stand out more on colored paper. So kind of keep that in mind. So here you can see um, how the white looks. Well, actually you can see all that from the way I have the camera. Um, I really love the range of blues. They have a good range of reds. My only criticism in the color line is that um, there are some colors that are very similar, like these three kind of golden ochre colors. Um, you know, there's a couple reds that are that are kind of similar. Um, and I would have rather had a few pastel shades like maybe a like a like a pastel coral or something but then again they also have those corals so I guess I'm not really missing anything in this set but since I like to work on toned paper having those lighter colors are really advantageous to me as far as coloring they go down very smooth and they feel very creamy very similar to a Prismacolor but not quite that soft so they're a little bit firmer not as hard as like a Derwent artist um, or a Soho pencil, they're they're kind of, they're very much like the Spectrum Noir, the new Spectrum Noir blendable pencils. That's what they remind me of the most. So another thing I did, well, I had, because I had the sketchbook and that's what I was working in, is I um, I took my Prismacolor swatches that we did when we did the new versus old Prismacolor uh, video. And so looking at this, I actually grabbed colors that were closest to those and I did one petal and just a little leaf just to see how much I could layer. I could layer about the same as I could with Prismacolors. These are very smooth pencils so you're not going to be able to layer as much as you can say with like a Soho or uh, one of the drier pencils. Um, I took my swatches here and what I wanted to do was to see how the colors um, from the Arteza brand compared to Prismacolor because I like to work on tone paper. I like a pencil with a little opacity. They're not quite as opaque as the um, Prismacolors, but you can kind of see like those two were Arteza ones. These here were Arteza. This I took the flesh color and or apricot. I can't remember what they called it. Um, no, nobody really has skin that color, but anyway, and I mixed it with some white to get a very similar color because that was just not there. Like apricot was just not as what what the heck do they call it anyway? <laughs> I can look on the back. I, I think it is apricot or peaches and cream, one or the other. It just not it doesn't have the body, doesn't have the white in it that um, that Prismacolor does. But I found a lot of the other. 
colors to be quite comparable. You can see that their colors are a little bit more vivid, a little bit more transparent than the Prismacolors. Uh, so if you work on white, that's that's wonderful. And I'm going to show you a demo where I color on um, tan and also on white so you can kind of see the difference. Uh, so here, this was my swatches just on smooth white cardstock. Um, so these are my new and old Prismacolor swatches. So this third column here were where I grabbed some Arteza ones just to see how they compared. Uh, I did see they're slightly a little streaky compared to Prismacolor. Not bad. Uh, this one's actually more like that. That one there. Um, but, you know, I would say very comparable without the issue of breaking because they're not quite as soft. But they do have that kind of slick feeling to them, but they also lay down quite a bit of pigment. Here on the black, you can kind of see how they're not as, as uh, pigmented. This, um, or not as opaque. I don't want to say pigmented because the color would be the pigment. Adding white to something makes it more opaque, doesn't make it more pigmented. Uh, so there is the Arteza white compared to Prismacolor white. And I kind of consider the Prismacolor white kind of the gold standard of um, white color pencils because that's... I love a good white color pencil. There's also a Derwent Signature, I think, that's a really nice white pencil. Um, but there you can see it's not bad, not quite as opaque, but certainly not bad. The yellow is not as opaque. Um, and actually, when you look at that that peaches and cream color next to the Prismacolor Flesh on black, it actually looks just about the same. And the pinks aren't quite as opaque. The blue, this blue is actually way more opaque, but that darker pressure blue was less because it's a more vibrant color. Vibrant colors are less opaque. Um, and then I was curious about about the Spectrum Noir Blendables. I'm just going to show you their new ones, the, the color blend. I think they came out last year. Um, I just wanted to give you a, a peek of these um, because I thought these are very similar. And I took the color pumpkin from this set, and I took the color pumpkin from that set. I didn't find a lot of overlapping color names, so I don't think they're just using the same color names. I, But they're very similar. That was the pumpkin from um, Arteza, and that was a pumpkin from Spectrum Noir. Very similar, but I also felt like they worked very similarly, so if you like these, but you don't want to pay the price for these, because these are, these are expensive, um, you can go with the Arteza. The Arteza also have light fast ratings on the pencils, which is something I've never seen on a pencil before, which is really awesome. Um, so they don't have a key to tell you what the light fastness is though, but I'm going to show you a way to kind of kind of check. So um, they look very, very similar. Let me grab this pink one here, just so you can kind of see the thickness of the lead. I found that the lead thickness is to be very similar. Um, I the, the Artezas are a little bit... Um, a little bit waxier maybe they just feel a little smoother to write with but they're they're so very similar that could just be because these are I've had these a little longer so maybe they're not as fresh I don't know <laughs> how fresh are your colored pencils they they're, they're fine they'll be fine I, I you know um, but yeah I, I think that I think they're very comparable and if you like this line of pencils but you don't want to spend uh, you know <laughs> over a dollar a piece or a dollar a piece for your pencils, the Artezas are a great um, option. They're they're very comparable to these. Uh, so I just wanted to show you that because I do like to when I when I get a new pencil and it reminds me of another brand, I like to check them out side by side just to see if they appear to be you know from the same company, the same manufacturer. Because a lot of companies do use over the same factories to build their pencils because not no company is going to make every single media if they're like kind of more reaching for a craft market uh, because the the styles change taste change so frequently so what really impressed me though was when i swatched them on white paper and this is my canson mixed media paper i really love the way they looked here because on their own, they're pretty, they're bright, they're vivid, but when I added some thinner, I actually just grabbed my brush cleaner, because that's what I had on hand, um, and a, and a um, little blending stump like this, I, I swatched these out, and then I just dipped my, my blending stump in some brush thinner, and just one like that, and they blended beautifully, and they gave me a nice watercolor look, or a way that you could duplicate the look of Copic markers like this. It just, they blended out so well, and they kept their vibrancy, and I think if they had a lot of pastel shades, those pastel shades wouldn't have. So if you look at some of the pastel shades, you know, they don't give you quite... Uh, you know, they don't blend out to, to very much because there's not a lot of pigment. But when you look at these reds and these blues and greens, they're just gorgeous when you blend them out with some uh, with some thinner. So that's what we're going to do today. That's one of the things we're going to do because I think it's a really great technique, especially if you don't want to color really firmly because it hurts your wrist or it just tires you out or just 
takes too darn long. Uh, it's a great way to use your pencils and give you that look of markers, give you that look of watercolors, give you the look of watercolor markers, you know, just a different way to use your pencils so you can get more bang for your buck. And that's what we are going to do. So I'm going to set this aside. I didn't even bother numbering these. I just wanted to see the colors because I find with a... Um, with a wax pencil, I find that if I look at the tip, that tells me what color it is for the most part. I don't feel like I need to keep a swatch for these, unlike markers where if you look at the tip of a marker, I'll show you really quick. You look at the tip of a marker and you know, this is like a bright blue but that tip of the marker looks really dark, you know, but you can't always trust the, the cap either. So, um, so I find that those things I need to swatch, these things I don't need to swatch, wax pencils I usually don't. Uh, or I swatch them, but I don't, I don't keep them with me. So I want to show you this example here that I've pre-stamped and started to color already. I'm actually almost done. I've got these two um, peonies. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better here. There we go. That's nice and close. I'm going to move my box of pencils so it's, uh, so it doesn't, um, so it doesn't get in the way or cast a shadow. So both of these are pretty. I actually like this one better. What I worked on here was the Arteza watercolor paper that I've been using a lot in my stamping tutorials lately. There's a rough side, which if you were sketching, I would go for this rougher side. It's not so rough that you can't use pencils, but it would grab a lot more color. Uh, but since I was gonna stamp first, I stamped on the back side, which is a smoother side. I find that they're, the, the coating on them is the same either way, and you don't really have, it doesn't hurt anything to, to paint on the smooth or the, or the rough side. And I use these stamps from Stampendous because they have a lot of really big area to color. And I'm going to link everything down below so you know, uh, so you can find everything. This right here is just a piece of sandpaper, basically. It's a fancy piece of sandpaper, st fancy tiny little piece of sandpaper sta uh, stapled to this little uh, handle. So it's basically meant for cleaning your, uh, your little stumps. And I'm just using one of these felt paper stumps. All it is is like some paper basically that's sharpened on each end and it helps with blending. So we are going to color both of these. I'm going to show you two different techniques and um, kind of share what works best for me. And I'm only using a few pencils here. So you don't, you can follow along with whatever you have. And um, if you're going to use these Arteza ones, I'll tell you what I'm using as we go. And I'll also put it in the video description. Oh, and I wanted to show you on these pencils, there are, there's like a star system um, and it will be anywhere from one to uh, to five stars, and I find that I'm try if I'm trying to figure out what is light fast and what isn't, um, I will sometimes look at the colors, and usually your purples and pinks are the ones that will tend to be less light fast, and they have these at three and four, and this white I ha it has as number one, so I'm thinking that probably the ones might be the the highest light fast and the fours might be the least highest light fast, but I wish they would put a, um, a color code there so we could tell um, what the light fastness rating is, but the, but hey, good, good, good on them for trying. Um, and in the video description, I'll put up any other information I find out about these pencils. So uh, what we're going to do here is we are going to color the petals first and I'm gonna show you how I would do this if I were coloring the whole image to save some time. So, uh, your wrist can get sore after coloring a lot. So to, if you're doing a big image like this, what I would do first is take your medium color and um, that would be this pink. This would be the, the medium color for this peony here. It would actually be the lightest one for that, but you're gonna have it all over the entire image. So go in and give that a nice coating. And I'm not, um, I don't sharpen my pencils until I need to because I find often I can color a lot better with a blunt, uh, pencil when I'm doing this and I'm going to do the same thing over here on this one on the white watercolor paper. So if you were, um, this Arteza paper is great for colored pencil. It's the watercolor paper though and I would use it for watercolor markers um, in any sort of like multimedia stuff like that where you're not going to be scrubbing the paper but if you're going to do like an actual watercolor painting this would not be the paper I would use because it's too, um, it's, it's, it will tend to pill once you get like tons of water or tons of abrasion on it. Okay, so I, and you can already see how much brighter that looks on the white versus on the tan. Um, so then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with my darker color. And by the way, this pink one right here, the first one I used was called Fuchsia. The second one I'm using here is called Amethyst and it's a, it's like this really nice deep purple. And I'm going to go in and add that into my shadow areas. And I'm doing long ovals. You can do circles or ovals. And I put it in with more pressure and I'm very, I'm not using much pressure and that's how much I'm getting. So that's really nice. And the fact that this has a little bit of texture to it is helping grab that pigment. 
Um, now I'm using less pressure and I'm just kind of fading it out. Okay, and I'm going to do that over here too. I do have to use a little bit more pressure on this tan paper. For one, it's smooth, and for two, it is kind of dark. Oh yeah, and I want to go in here and add some shadow under the curl of that petal and kind of where the other petals are overlapping. I'm going to hold the pencil further back so you can see a little bit better. It might make my coloring a little sloppier though. If you want more pressure, hold your pencils close to the tip. If you want less pressure, hold them hold them further back or if you want a looser line. And then this is the medium one. So I'm just going to kind of overlap the two colors there with this medium color. Add a little bit in there. It's kind of overlap there. That's our bridge color. Okay, and I'm already telling, I can already tell, I do not have enough color on the tan one. So I'm going to go back in with my pink, and I am using some firm pressure. Like, I can feel my muscles working on my arms. Okay, I didn't feel any muscles working when I was coloring that. Okay, so you're getting a little bit of a workout here. So this is where, this is a kind of technique where if you have some um, some strength issues in your wrist, if you have some arthritis, it's going to probably bother you. So that's why I, I like to get kind of get in and do these demos so I can kind of show you apples to apples um, the kind of experience of working on different with different medias because I've had friends with colored pencils and they've given them away because they're like, I just, it kills my wrist, I can't do it. Um, but if you just tried a different technique or maybe a different paper, you would have had the joy in using these supplies. Now, now what I'm going to do is grab some um, Gamzol, and this is a, it's just a paint thinner, um, and I have a bunch of Q-tips, uh, not Q-tips, cotton balls in this little tiny mason jar that my, uh, my niece Rachel got me out in Las Vegas. I thought it was cute, perfect use for this, and I am going to um, put my little blending stump in here on the, on the cotton ball. And that is going to just pick up enough. It's just going to get enough on here. And it also keeps it from spilling and keeps, you know, your cats from trying to get in here and, and drink it. And here you can see you can blend it right out. Now something, oh, I do have another sketch to show you with these pencils um, in my art journal. I did uh, some sketching with this and then I added some watercolor over it just to kind of fill in any of the tooth of my paper. And, uh, and actually I found that with water, these will dissolve a little tiny bit. So you know that's another way you can kind of smooth it it's not going to dissolve like this and it's not going to dissolve like watercolor pe pencils they have watercolor pencils i haven't used their wood watercolor pencils but i have used their um their other ones um you know their woodless watercolor pencils and they're great uh, so if you do want something that's going to dissolve in water skip these get watercolor pencils that's going to be better for you now for the for this one i'm not going to blend with a with a uh, solvent i'm going to blend with my white pencil you could use a blending pencil, but the advantage of using the white is, well, for one, you have it, right? It's in that set. The other reason is that um, it's going to add a little opacity, and it's going to make it stand out more on that paper. Let's see. So I can also blend, I can take that darker purple, the medium purple, rather, and I can blend the darker purple into the white with that so I don't get it too light. And if I find that everything's gotten a little dull, I can go in with the pink and kind of glaze over. Take your time with this. I'm going a little fast for the demo. But yeah, just kind of layer. So this is definitely a smoother look than this. Um, and this is a lot easier than that. And I'm also going to show you how I did the leaves because it's so easy. And um, this is the way I usually blend. Um, sometimes putting, a, putting if I'm going to do a big flower, I go with that light color all over it, or the medium or the light color, all over the entire thing first, because it saves time. But if I'm doing something small like this, uh, this is how I generally will do it. I'll go in with my darkest color first. So I'm going to do that, that green in little circles, little scribbles, right down the center there. I want the edges light because it's overlapping the other petals. Then I'm going to take my um, my lime, lime. This is, um, by the way, this is pear. This is moss. And um, I already showed you the purples, I think. I'll list them. I'll list them anyway in the video description, so you'll have it. I'm going to go over the whole thing with this color. 
And I'm going to do that over here as well. You can add some yellow if you want, but this is pretty, this is a lot of yellow in it. And I think maybe I'll go in back with a little bit more dark, because you do need, you just need more pigment when you're doing it on the colored paper. Now I'm going to go in with the other end of my blending stump. And look at that, isn't that pretty? So easy too. And over here, um, you can I'll actually grab yellow to blend, just to pull it out to the edge. And then I can go in with some white if I want to perk up that color a little bit more. And that just really finishes it off. And I just thought these would be pretty Mother's Day cards or something like that. Um, so that pretty much does it. These are the Arteza pencil set of 72. I'm going to show you that sketch from my um, art journal here. Let me just flip through and find the darn thing. Here we go. So I will zoom out. Whoa, there we go. Uh, so I was just kind of sketching and, um, you know, not really worrying about what I was making. I really wasn't planning on showing it. But then when I went to add some watercolor, I noticed that a lot of the pencil kind of dissolved a little bit. So it really smoothed out my look. I mean, it wasn't as smooth as using the solvent here, but it worked out really well. And um, it was just, I just thought it was kind of a fun, interesting coincidence. So if you kind of go over it with some watercolor to kind of fill in the tooth of your paper, you'll notice that it will actually kind of smooth in with the pencils a little bit, even though they're not not watercolor pencils. Uh, if you have any questions on these, let me know in the comments below. I'm going to link everything up. Um, there will be affiliate links just to let you know. I will earn a small percentage if you do purchase through them. Um, but use what you have first. Try what you have. See if you can do these techniques with what you have. If you're satisfied with what you got, then keep it. Um, if you're looking for something a little bit different, if you're looking to have a, um, a nice quality pencil for, you know, pretty reasonable price, these are a great option. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Until next time, happy crafting.